Hello and welcome to How to Pass Numerical Reasoning Tests with me, Tim, from Grad Tests. This is the first in a series of videos which is going to really help you excel at taking numerical reasoning tests. This first video is really just an introduction to the topic, and in the later videos in the series, we'll deep dive into lots of worked examples to show you all the common tricks and patterns and tips for taking numerical reasoning tests and doing really well. So what are they? Well, usually you'll get presented with a graph, table, or chart, and it's your job to interpret data and make some simple calculations. You'll then choose your answer from a series of four, or sometimes five options. Let's have a look at this, this example. So on the left, you can see that there's a simple table, and it appears to be something to do with internet service providers and their market share. And you've got data over a series of years. You've then got a question on the right-hand side, which requires you to make a basic calculation and you've got four options to choose from. So my top tip here is to watch out for what I call the dirty tricks. So the dirty tricks that the test providers might play on you are led to make you choose the wrong option, basically. Um, so you're gonna have to look out for things such as scales changing. So let's have a look at this last example. You can see that um, the scale of the table is in thousands, if you read the title there but then the answer is not in thousands. Okay, so you're gonna to have to do a conversion between two scales. You might come across uh, graphs with changing axes or confusing axes, maybe the X and Y have been swapped. You might have to make conversions, let's say from milliliters to liters, or from euros to pounds or that kind of thing. You might have uh, tables that have very, very small font footnotes which have a crucial piece of information that you have to also take into account. You might have to face rounding up or down to a, to a certain amount. Sometimes uh, in a question, you might actually get a calculation that's too hard. That is, it would require minutes and minutes of calculations to actually come up with the correct answer. If you take enough practice tests, you'll be able to quickly identify these questions and you'll be able to take the right strategy when you actually face one. And the right strategy is to make an educated guess and move on. There's no point spending five minutes on one question. All questions are worth the same. So there are some of the sort of dirty tricks that get played on you. And if you practice lots, you'll, you'll come to learn these and they'll become second nature to you. So why are numerical reasoning tests used? Well, similar to verbal and inductive reasoning tests, they are relatively cheap uh, from the perspective of the company. So they're going to buy these in enormous bulk quantities if they're doing a big graduate or intern intake. So they're going to get them from $10, $20, $30 per test. They are a very, very quick way to weed out um, candidates as well, particularly in these big intakes. So if you have 10,000 candidates, there's no other way other than through psychometric testing that you can weed out, let's say, 9,000 of those in two, three, four days. They are relatively fair. Um, in the sense that if you score 85% on a numerical reasoning test and somebody else scores 80%, you're going to rank ahead of them for that component. Um, they're also testing a very core skill. Uh, most modern jobs um, require some level of numerical and data interpretation skills. Uh, certainly if you're graduating from a commerce degree, accounting, uh, law, engineering, it's going to be expected that you have pretty reasonable numerical skills. So they are at least trying to test that in a fair way. In terms of who uses them, look, everybody from the big management consulting companies, big four accounting companies, your investment banks, your big corporates in Europe and North America and Asia, uh, big resources companies, everybody's using numerical reasoning tests. They are probably on par in popularity with verbal reasoning tests. Uh, and a little bit more popular than the logical reasoning tests. In terms of when they're used in the recruitment phase, look, in general, psychometric testing often comes straight after the application stage. So you'll go onto the uh, company's website that you're applying for, you make that application, and then you may or may not get a test invite via email, and you'll have to sit that test online. Now, this is my next top tip. Make sure you take the test yourself. It's very, very tempting if you have a particularly smart friend to get them to take the test for you, but it's a very, very risky strategy and I recommend against it. The reason is, if you look back at the, the phases of the recruitment process here, if you complete the test online and you do well and you pass, or, or your friend passes for you, and you get past a C review and you get to some form of interview stage, 
could be in a big assessment center or Super Saturday, or it could be just a one-off interview. At some point, the company you're applying for is likely to retest you. And they're gonna retest you in their offices under supervised conditions. And it transpires that there's a big variance between your score in the supervised session versus unsupervised. It's gonna be a big red flag for you, and you don't want red flags in the recruitment process. It's very, very risky to get someone else to take the test for you. That's why I always recommend take the test yourself. How to prepare, don't forget the basics of uh, any test preparation. You need to be well rested, so that means not doing the test at 6 a.m. or midnight. Um, make sure you've had a good rest, you, you've slept a lot and everything's going well there. Perhaps have a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, get a bit of caffeine into you. Um, make sure you don't do it while you're in a rush, so don't duck in between uh, two tutorials or two lectures into a room to, to do the test, not a good idea. Uh, make sure you have absolutely no distractions. So even a momentary distraction, if somebody comes and asks you a question or, or you notice something out of the corner of your eye, that can lose 10, 15, 20 seconds easily from your train of thought. Uh, and that will easily be the difference between answering one more question in the test, uh, which are often very uh, time pressed. And one mark either way could well be the difference between you passing and failing, passing being getting an interview, failing being not getting an interview. So make sure you have absolutely no distractions. Do it in your bedroom, door shut, lock on, blinds down, um, you know, some sort of quiet music in your ears and just make sure you block everything up. Make sure you have an uninterrupted internet connection as well. Um, let me tell you, if your internet drops out for whatever reason and you can't complete the test or you have any technical issues for that matter, if you call the test provider or the company you've applied for and complain and try to get something done about it, it is not going to happen. I guarantee you they won't care. Um, the reason is, is they have thousands and thousands of people who've applied uh, for the jobs. They're going to pick maybe half a percent of the people who've applied, maximum, probably less than that. So you, you're just another candidate, um, and there's no point them spending time trying to sort out your technical issues. They're not going to listen to you, as harsh as that may sound. Uh, make sure you complete it with a mouse rather than... Um, a tablet or a mobile, these sites aren't optimized for use on those devices. And also as opposed to a laptop with a keypad or a swipe pad, um, because it's gonna be much more efficient to select the answers using a mouse. And again, that, that may seem slightly pedantic, but I can guarantee you, if you save one second per question, it's gonna be an extra 30 seconds roughly that you're gonna be able to spend on answering other questions and improving your score. Um, the numerical reasoning test is always a good idea to have a spreadsheet open. So forget about the old pocket calculator. Spreadsheet is monumentally more efficient for making calculations, if you think about it, than a, than a po pocket calculator where you have to sit there punching in each number individually, make one slight mistake and you can't go back, etc. Definitely have a spreadsheet open. Ideally, if you had two screens, that would be the best situation because then you could have a spreadsheet on one screen and then um, the test open on the other. How do you do well? There are no shortcuts. There are no shortcuts, sorry to say that. The only way is to practice, practice, practice. And what you need to practice are the practice tests themselves. So don't bother about you know thinking of innovative ways to improve numerical skills by doing Sudoku and you know adding up numbers in your head and that kind of stuff. Forget about it, just do the practice test. That's how you're gonna get your, you know, the biggest bang for your buck. And by taking the practice tests, you're going to get a lot of things. First and foremost, you're going to uh, be on the lookout continually for what I call these dirty tricks. So you're going to be very, very, very aware of when they've asked you to round or when you need to make some sort of conversion um, or when the scale is changing. All those common patterns and tricks you're going to have in the forefront of your mind. You won't have to remember them consciously. They're just going to be there as part of your toolkit uh, and you're going to do really well because of it. You're also going to learn the best way to manage your time during the test. Um, some people like to go as quickly as possible to get to the end with a bit of spare time and go back and check their answers. Some people like to space it out. You know, you'll figure out what works for you. And you're going to get a fantastic attention to detail. There's going to be tiny, tiny little things in there that are going to make the answer go one way or the other, and you're going to learn to be picking those up. So my final top tip is focus. Focus is so important in so many aspects of life, particularly here. So again, to practice, to do well these tests, 
in the actual testing environment, just take the practice tests. They've been specifically designed to prepare you to actually do well in the tests. So what now? Well, watch part two of this video series uh, where we're going to go through some worked examples of actual numerical reasoning tests. And you get the answers, you're going to learn some tricks and tips. Um, you're going to really excel if you watch that video. Uh, you can also go right away and take a free practice numerical reasoning test at gradtests.com.au. And, and if you have any questions, comments, or you need any help, feel free to flick me an email, uh, tim at gradtests.com.au. I'll be uh, happy to help you out. And that's all for today, guys. Thanks very much.